Our ancestors had no claws, no fangs, no thick skin to protect them. They were physically outmatched in a world full of predators. Yet somehow, these fragile creatures didn't just survive, they conquered the entire planet. The secret wasn't in their bodies, but in their minds. Through a series of breakthrough innovations, fire control, stone tools, organized cooperation, and environmental manipulation, they transformed from vulnerable prey into Earth's dominant force. What happened next would reshape the planet forever, starting around 1.7 million years ago with a single discovery that separated humans from every other species. By the end of this video, you'll understand how the weakest creatures on Earth became its most powerful world shapers. Picture this. You're a small, defenseless human ancestor, and you've just discovered something that will separate your species from every other animal on Earth forever. Early humans were basically walking meals at this point. They ran slower than gazelles, had less strength than apes, and their teeth couldn't even crack bones that hyenas munched like potato chips. While other animals had claws, fangs, or thick hides for protection, Humans had nothing but their wits. But then something happened that no other species had ever achieved. They learned to steal fire from lightning strikes and volcanic eruptions, then keep it alive. This wasn't just luck or accident. By about one million years ago, our ancestors were managing fire regularly, with systematic use by 125,000 years ago, according to the archeological record. These early humans figured out how to capture natural fire and maintain it using dry grass, twigs, and animal fat. They became the first species to control this powerful force of nature instead of running from it. Fire wasn't just about warmth, though that was important. It became humanity's ultimate survival tool, providing defense against predators and revolutionizing how they found food. Cooking meat unlocked calories that their small teeth couldn't access through raw consumption alone. Before fire, human ancestors were limited to easily digestible plant parts like seeds, flowers, and fruits. Cooking made starchy and fibrous foods edible, dramatically expanding their menu options. Research shows cooking substantially boosted our ancestors' energy intake from both plants and meats. What's crazy is that cooking food actually started changing human biology in real time. Over generations, cooked diets led to smaller jaws and intestines and supported larger brains, setting a new biological trajectory for Homo. The cooking hypothesis suggests that this single discovery triggered the explosion in brain size that would define human evolution for the next million years. Fire also gave humans their first taste of controlling nature rather than being controlled by it. They could extend daylight hours, scare off predators with flames and smoke, and venture into territories that were previously death traps. Cooking also killed parasites in food and allowed meat to be dried and preserved for lean seasons. Fire transformed humans from scavengers fighting over scraps to apex predators who could hunt at night and process food in ways no animal had ever done before. Yet even with fire mastered, early humans still needed something else to bridge the gap between their weak bodies and the dangerous world around them. That breakthrough came when some unknown ancestor picked up a rock and made it sharper. The 3.3 million-year-old Lomekwi tools discovered near Lake Turkana in Kenya completely changed what we thought we knew about human evolution. These earliest stone tools actually predate our genus Homo by a million years, meaning tool-making might have been what created us, not the other way around. These weren't just random rocks that early humans grabbed off the ground. They were traveling dozens of miles to find specific types of stone like black obsidian, creating early exchange networks for high-quality toolstones. 
At Olorja Sili in Kenya, archaeologists found that early humans were sourcing obsidian from at least 50 miles away just to make their projectile points. Recent AI-powered analysis has shown these flints were heated to temperatures up to 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit, 600 degrees Celsius, revealing sophisticated heat treatment techniques. Talk about dedication to quality materials. They also started using color during this period, chiseling red and black manganese rocks to make pigments for decorating their weapons or themselves. The evolution from simple hand axes to sophisticated projectile points happened over millions of years, but around 400,000 years ago, something dramatic changed in East Africa. The environment was shifting rapidly. Fresh water sources dried up, grasslands disappeared, and a staggering 85% of local mammal species turned over during this period. Instead of driving humans to extinction, these extreme changes sparked innovation. Humans suddenly abandoned their chunky Aculean hand axes that they'd been using for over a million years and started making smaller, deadlier weapons. These new tools included sharp blades and spear points that could kill from a distance, marking the beginning of Middle Stone Age technology. Shaping blades to a perfect form before napping them shows planning abilities unique in the animal kingdom. Stone tools weren't just weapons either. They became humanity's Swiss army knife, used for cutting meat, scraping hides, digging roots, and even making other tools. A spear tip could penetrate thick hide from a safe distance, while sharp blades could process carcasses efficiently. But having fire and weapons still wasn't enough to conquer the world. Humans needed something that would multiply their individual strengths beyond what any single predator could match. That breakthrough came through organized tribal society. While saber-tooth cats relied on individual strength and pack hunters like wolves used basic cooperation, early humans invented something far more powerful. Survival wasn't just about making weapons though. Humans had to master clothing from animal hides, and anthropologists date the earliest use of animal skins for clothing to around 120,000 years ago, helping humans survive colder climates. This innovation provided essential insulation against cold, protection from the sun, and a barrier against environmental hazards, allowing them to expand into new territories beyond tropical and subtropical climates. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of competing with each other for resources like most animals, humans started specializing and sharing roles within their groups. At pinnacle point 164,000 years ago, some tribe members focused entirely on heat treating silkrete to create superior stone tools, while others became master hunters or plant food specialists. This created the first division of labor in human history, with expert toolmakers perfecting techniques for creating sharper blades, hunters learning animal behavior patterns, and gatherers identifying which roots, seeds, and fruits were safe to eat. This cooperation allowed human tribes to take on prey that no individual human could ever handle. Coordinated hunting enabled them to successfully target megafauna like massive mammoths and dangerous bison herds that provided substantial food sources along with materials for clothing and tools. A single mammoth could feed an entire tribe for weeks while providing enough hide to clothe dozens of people. What's remarkable is that this tribal cooperation was learned behavior, not instinct. By sharing and passing on knowledge, where to find shelter, how to read animal tracks, and when to harvest plant foods, tribes turned survival into a group project. Parents showed children hunting techniques, grandparents shared information about seasonal resources, and skilled craftspeople trained apprentices. This knowledge transfer meant that each generation started with more information than the previous one. 
the formation of these early tribes created something unprecedented in nature, a species that got stronger through cooperation rather than competition. Tribal cooperation became humanity's secret weapon, turning physically weak individuals into an unstoppable collective force that could outthink, outplan, and outlast any predator. Yet even these organized tribes needed to go one step further to truly dominate their world. That step was learning to actively reshape their environment rather than simply adapting to it. Early humans began using controlled burns to transform entire landscapes, and evidence from Gesher Benot Yaakov shows deliberate burning as early as 790,000 years ago, hundreds of thousands of years before agriculture. By setting low-intensity fires, people lured grazing animals into traps, effectively herding wildlife like today's ranchers. These fires weren't accidents or natural disasters. They were carefully planned tools that cleared forests, flushed out prey, and created grasslands that attracted the animals they wanted to hunt. This wasn't accidental behavior either. Humans were deliberately manipulating entire ecosystems, building elaborate traps, and managing animal herds. Early humans cleared land for camps by removing vegetation and leveling ground, creating semi-permanent settlements in strategic locations. They even influenced which plants grew where through selective harvesting, taking seeds from preferred food plants and spreading them in areas where they wanted those species to thrive. Fire played a crucial role in clearing out caves, providing shelter and initiating organized use of protected spaces. What's mind-blowing is that this environmental manipulation started hundreds of thousands of years before agriculture. Humans were ecosystem engineers from the very beginning, not just passive participants in their surroundings. These early humans weren't just adapting to different climates and terrains. They were actively changing those environments to make them more suitable for human survival and expansion. The combination of fire, tools, and tribal cooperation allowed humans to transform landscapes on a scale that no other species had ever achieved. They could create fire breaks to protect their settlements, burn undergrowth to encourage new plant growth that attracted grazing animals, and use smoke to communicate across long distances. By managing animal populations through strategic hunting and habitat modification, humans began controlling the food chain rather than just participating in it. From physical vulnerability, humans had learned to read and rewrite the landscape, becoming architects of ecosystems long before farming. The weak, clawless creatures who once hid from predators had developed something far more powerful than any natural weapon the ability to consciously transform the world around them. This transformation reveals something profound about human nature. We've never been passive participants in our environment. We've always been its architects. The journey from defenseless prey to planetary dominance wasn't about growing claws or fangs. It was about developing the one trait that no other species possessed, the ability to consciously reshape the world. Humans have fundamentally reorganized the planet, transforming plants, animals, and vast areas of habitable land, with their waste products now existing on a geological scale. Today's climate crisis is an echo of our ability to reshape Earth. Understanding our origins as landscape engineers may guide us to wield that power wisely. If you find this saga of human ingenuity compelling, Hit subscribe to explore how our past shapes tomorrow's world.